this part covers CHB inverter with unequal DC voltage. So before I begin to explain this concept, let me quickly go through the CHB inverter with equal DC voltage source. When we consider 7 level CHB with equal DC voltage source, then in the construction of inverter we need 3 cells of H bridge unit. And these are the 7 levels we can produce by this construction. And for 9 level CHB with equal DC voltage source, we need similar type of 4 H bridge cells. And these are the levels we can produce by this 9 level CHB inverter. In the 7 level as well as in the 9 level CHB with equal DC voltage sources, all the H bridge units have all the switches with equal voltage and the current ratings. Apart from that, the DC supply applied to each of the H bridge cell is equal. So by keeping these key points in mind, let us proceed to understand CHB inverter with unequal DC voltage. So for 7 level CHB, you can see that only two cells are required, H1 and H2. For the equal DC voltage, 7 level CHB needs three cells, H1, H2 and H3 that we have just seen in the previous slide. So instead of using three cells, the purpose of producing 7 level output can be achieved with the help of 2 cells. And these are the same 7 levels we can produce using this structure. What about the 9 level CHB with unequal DC voltage? In the previous slide we have seen that for 9 level CHB with equal DC voltage we need 4 cells H1 to H4. But when we go with the unequal DC voltage concept, then 9 level CHB inverter can be constructed with only 2 cells. And these 9 levels we can produce with this construction. So in the 7 level CHB, you can see that DC supply given to the first bridge is VDC, whereas DC supply given to the second bridge is 2 VDC. 9 level CHB also has the 2 cell construction. The first cell has the DC supply with the magnitude VDC, but second cell has the DC supply with magnitude 3 times VDC. Now let me explain how can we produce this 7 level output using this 2 cell structure. So to produce the first level with magnitude 0, all the switches from the first cell H1 and all the switches from the second bridge H2 are kept off. So output of the first bridge is 0 and output of the second bridge is also 0. And hence we get net amount of output magnitude is equal to 0. Now in the positive half cycle to produce the plus VDC, then these diagonal switches of H1 bridge S11 and S21, these two switches are triggered simultaneously by keeping S31 and S41 in the off state condition. Hence we get the output of bridge 1 is VDC, the output of the second bridge should be 0. So that VDC plus 0, then we can get the level VDC in the output. So to achieve the 0 level in the second bridge, we have to turn on S12 and S32 simultaneously. Because of these two conducting switches, the output of the second bridge would be 0. Now to produce plus 2 VDC, from the diagram, we can know that the lower cell has ability to produce the 2 VDC across the output terminal. The 
that implies the output from the first cell should be zero. So to produce two VDC across the output terminal of second bridge, S12 and S22, these two switches are triggered simultaneously while keeping S32 and S42 in the off state. So we get VH2 is equal to two times VDC. And to produce the zero from first bridge, we have to turn on S11 and S31 simultaneously. So zero from the first bridge and two VDC from the second bridge. And these two cells are connected in series manner. So output would be zero plus two VDC is equal to two VDC. And to produce the maximum magnitude plus 3 VDC across the output terminal, the first bridge can maximum produce VDC and the second bridge can maximum produce 2 VDC. When we trigger these two diagonal switches in H1 and these two diagonal switches in H2. So VH1 would be VDC and VH2 would be 2 VDC. So VDC plus 2 VDC and output will be 3 VDC. For the negative level minus VDC, we have to trigger these diagonal switches from H1 simultaneously so that these VDC appears across the output terminal of bridge 1 with the reverse polarity. So we get VH1 is equal to minus VDC. That means we have to make sure that VH2 is equal to 0. And for that S12 and S32 are simultaneously triggered. So S31 and S41 from the bridge 1 and S12 and S32 from the cell 2. These four on switches would provide us minus VDC across this output terminal. And to produce minus 2 VDC, we have to trigger these diagonal switches of cell 2 simultaneously, S32 and S42. So these two VDC supply appears with the reverse polarity across the output terminal of cell 2. So VH2 would become minus 2 VDC. And to get VH1 is equal to 0, we have to trigger S11 and S31 simultaneously. Hence, VH1 will be 0, whereas VH2 will be minus 2 VDC. So, 0 plus minus 2 VDC, we get minus 2 VDC across this output terminal. And to produce minus 3 VDC across the output terminal, we have to turn on these diagonal switches from H1 bridge and these diagonal switches from H2 bridge. Output from the bridge 1 would be minus VDC and output from the bridge 2 would be minus 2 VDC. So minus VDC plus minus 2 VDC, the answer would be minus 3 VDC. So this is how by executing the switches of H1 and H2 in a specific manner, we can produce these seven levels across the output terminal. And by following the same principle, we can produce these nine levels across these nine levels CHB having unequal DC voltage sources. Different DC voltages may be selected for the power cells. So in the CHB with unequal DC voltage, we can use the different magnitude of DC supply for H1 and H2 bridging. With unequal DC voltages, the number of the voltage levels can be increased without increasing number of the H bridge cells. So that is the benefit of this unequal DC voltage concept. Using only two cells, we can produce seven level and using only two cells, having the different magnitude of DC voltage sources, we can produce nine level. 
right but if we go with the concept equal dc voltage then to produce seven level we need three h bridge units and for nine level we need four cells so in short by implementing the unequal dc voltage concept we can simplify the construction of cascaded h bridge inverter the dc voltage is for the h bridge cells are not equal in the seven level topology the dc voltage is for h1 and h2 are vdc and 2 vdc respectively the two cell inverter leg is able to produce seven voltage levels 3 vdc 2 vdc vdc 0 and minus vdc minus 2 vdc and at last minus 3 vdc the merits of the modular structure are essentially lost that means the ratings of the switches of cell 1 and the ratings of the switches of cell 2 are different in the concept of unequal dc voltage so we can say that this concept no longer provide us the modular structure in addition the switching pattern design becomes much more difficult so these are the demerits of implementing the unequal dc voltage in cascaded h bridge multi level inverter features of cascaded h bridge multi level inverter for real power conversions from ac to dc then dc to ac the cascaded inverters need separate dc sources the structure of separated dc sources is well suited for various renewable energy sources like fuel cell photovoltaic and the biomass connecting the dc sources between the two converters in a back to back fashion is not possible because a short circuit can be introduced when two back to back converters are not switching in a synchronous manner output voltage and the power increases as the number of the level increases the fundamental output voltage of inverter is set by the dc bus voltage which can be controlled through a variable dc link unlike the flying capacitor multi level inverter and the diode clamp multi level inverter if we go with the equal dc voltage concept then chb multi level inverter provides the modular structure lower total harmonic distortion in the output voltage as well as the less db by dt high voltage operation without switching devices in series large number of the isolated dc supplies are required and as the number of the level increases the number of the count goes high now let us do the comparison among these three types of multi level inverter the diode clamp multi level inverter flying capacitor multi level inverter and the cascaded h bridge multi level inverter with the first parameter main switching devices in dc mli per leg we required m minus 1 into 2 igbts where m is the number of level in fc mli we need m minus 1 into 2 igbts per leg whereas in the chb we need m minus 1 into 2 igbts for the main diodes in diode clamp multi level inverter for m level we need m minus 1 into 2 diodes for flying capacitor multi level inverter also m minus 1 into 2 diodes and for chb also m minus 1 into 2 number of diodes clamping diodes in dc mli we need m minus 1 into m minus 2 number of the diodes Whereas in flying capacitor multi level inverter we do not need any clamping diodes and same is applied to CHB. DC bus capacitors for DC MLI M-1 
number of DC bus capacitors required in FCMLI is also M minus 1. But for CHB, the number of DC bus capacitors is M minus 1 divided by 2. Balancing capacitor, we do not need any balancing capacitor in the construction of DCMLI. But in the case of FCMLI, we need M minus 1 into M minus 2 divided by 2 number of balancing capacitors. Whereas in the CHB, we do not require a single balancing capacitor. So this is the comparison among three types of multi-level inverter.